Do you remember when you were little, you would take your straw and whatever drink that you had and you'd start blowing bubbles? Well, what if we took that same principle and applied it underwater for a watch commercial? So it all starts with an idea. First things first, I had to take into account the needs of the client, right? So he needed a 30 second video with no actors and showing off the underwater capacity of this watch. So once I got those in place, I then started coming up with some ideas, taking inspiration from Instagram, going seeing some more typical product commercials and then taking inspiration shots, lighting, anything I could from those to throw into this. So I really wanted to show the details. I wanted to show the ability that it has to be underwater, fully submerged up to different depths as well. Since it is a diver watch. So once I figured that out, I then started brainstorming a script. For this one, I wanted to have a voiceover so that somebody can actually be talking about the watch itself to go along with the visuals that are playing. The script took a while to finish, but once I finished that, then I started moving on to the shot list. With the shot list, I, I had some shots in mind, but I really wanted to make sure that I was playing along with what the audio from the script is saying. So that way, the video feels a lot more cohesive. I'd be able to cut to beat with the music and have the right visuals show for the right words that are being said. Once I went through and got all my shot lists done, I start with the shot ideas, I make sure that I get all my ideas written down and then I organize them into the shot list of the ones that I actually want to do. So then we go into the shot grouping and I go by simple, medium, and difficult. So simple can be anything from the setup to the actual set itself to even the camera moves that we're doing. For example, a super simple shot would just be a tripod shot shot of the watch spinning or even the watch just sitting there. That would be a very simple shot and I would put that in that category. A medium shot would be anything that would be a little bit more difficult and complicated than just having a tripod shot. I stick into the medium difficulty. Now the complex shots are the ones that are very complex. <laughs> very different from tripod shots. They have a lot of moving pieces like camera movements as well as different lighting, maybe different effects, certain practical effects for instance in this video, I'm planning to have little bubble tubes so I can have in-camera transitions instead of doing it later in post. After I get all this shot grouping done, then I go into my setup ideas. So with the setup ideas, these are solely for the actual sets themselves that I will be recording. I go through and I think about the lighting, I think about where they should be, where the fish tank should be, where the subject should be, and how everything should be arranged beforehand so that, the, that way when I get into shooting, it'll go a lot smoother since I already have a rough idea. Plus, having a rough idea allows for the room to tweak it as things don't necessarily go your way. <laughs> <laughs> Problem solving is a lot easier when you have a rough idea of what you would like to do. So this first setup is going to mainly be the only setup that I use. I wanted a black backdrop to be in the background. That way it kind of looks like just an infinite ocean, super dark, you know, that, that kind of style is what I'm going for, really trying to just focus on the watch alone. Then I'll have my Nanlite 720B as an edge light behind the fish tank in the watch shining down into the fish tank to kind of get those water on top of water reflections as well onto the watch. Then I'll have three different air tubes attached to the fish tank. I'm gonna probably put those on with gaff tape. So I'm gonna have one that's gonna be in the middle that'll be pointing up to shoot bubbles straight up. Then I'm gonna have two on the sides, one on the right, one on the left. That way those will shoot bubbles left and right. That's how I'm going to be doing the in-camera transitions with my own breath in these little plastic tubes that I found at Home Depot. Next, I'll have the 300D Mark II as a fill light on the right of the set. That way, it's not extremely dark on one side because of the 720B's power on the other. Since the watch is super reflective, I need a way to cut those reflections, so the best way to do it that I have seen is to get white poster board, get one of those little clips, put it on, put the clip on the white poster board and just set it up and it'll freestand. Now I'm also gonna use my Zero E light bar. So this is an extendable light bar that I have and I'm going to be using it for that specific rim light shot that I have planned out. Now the goal is the consistent lighting will help tremendously throughout the video. Plus it'll just be nice to have the set there so that then I can actually record it after my day job. And the very first thing that I gotta do with these sets is get everything put into place 
and start filling the fish tank. So now that the fish tank is full, let's go over a little bit about the setup and what exactly we have here. Let's start with this tube that's inside of this fish tank right here. So this tube serves the purpose of bubble transitions in the actual video. So this is a practical effect that I'm trying to see if it'll work well. But we have that, we have the tube which is just held down by gaff tape to the fish tank. Then for our lights, we have the Aperture 300D Mark II with the Light Dome Mark II on it that also has a grid to lessen the amount of spill because I don't want anything to hit our ba black backdrop. Then we have our black backdrop, which is actually a piece of fabric that I used to use in light painting that I decided to just put up on my new backdrop stand since I don't actually have a black backdrop. Then we have the Nanlite 720B. Which this one I might need to put a polarizing gel on. That way the watch won't have massive hot spots on it from the reflections of the actual light because I have a matte box that will go on the front of my camera with a polarizing gel that will help cut down that reflection. All right, let's get shooting. For this first shot, it's gonna be a little interesting because I have the watch here, but the first thing that I need to do is have that static shot like I have right now, which just means it's on the tripod, the camera isn't moving at all, and only the subject will be moving. But the problem is, this watch is really heavy, so I need to shoot this in 120 FPS so I can get it really slow. It literally drops just like this. So I'm hoping 120 FPS will do the job, <laughs> but I guess we'll see. All right, so I did the first test drop. It's as I figured, it is way too fast. It drops way too fast for even 120 FPS. So I'm gonna need to do some fan dangling. So it's time to bust out the fishing wire and see what I can do there. If that doesn't work, I don't know, but it's time to, time to problem solve. <laughs> Oh, that's so cool. What? <laughs> that one's so cool. I like that one a lot. Okay, so I have the first couple shots done. Those ones are super simple, but now I'm moving on to the bubble transition stuff. So with the bubble transitions, I'm just gonna get a test shot, kind of a clean plate, just to see how the bubbles actually look. Once I get that, I'll feel a lot more confident going into the actual bubble making process. <laughs> I've done the bubble test and I've realized I'm gonna have to come really close to this fish tank because the next couple of shots that have the bubble transition, I'm actually supposed to have more of a detail shot. Now I can reframe, which I do plan on doing in editing, which basically means just zooming in in the editing software with the footage. That way I can actually get close enough to the fish tank without having a macro lens since that is pretty much one of the lenses that I'm lacking. So I'm gonna get really close with my camera to the actual fish tank, and I'm gonna have the watch close to the actual wall of the fish tank. That way I can kind of have a static shot from both to play with in editing, and I can still do the bubble transition all by myself. <laughs> so, let's try and do that right now. So I got the bubble transitions done. I have a few more to shoot later, but they're a little more complex. Now for this part, we're gonna be turning off the lights. 
and we're gonna be only using this bad boy right here. The Sirui T120, just so that we can get this cool little rim light shot. So basically with this shot, what I'm aiming for is an edge light around the actual watch that's just sitting in the water. That way I can actually use it as a transitional piece in editing. So in order to do this, I'm literally just gonna be doing what I was doing before with the bubbles and I'll be holding the watch in the water, the same framing, nice tight shot, and I'll be moving the light over the fish tank. And when I do this, I'm hoping that it will give me a nice little edge light right around the back of the watch. That way I can edit it out to use for a transition in the actual edit itself. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> All right, while we have the lights turned off, there's also this shot that I need to get of the C3 illumination. So basically that's a glow in the dark coating that is on the numbers and everything. I need to get this shot, but in order to do so, I need to ask for some help. Hello. Now the plan is turn on the 720B, blast the watch with light really fast, dunk it in the water and just have a static shot of that and I'll just pull focus a couple times just to make sure that I have it to where I can reverse it and everything's in focus and use it for the actual edit itself. Now it's time to pull out the big guns, the probe lens. So this probe lens is the equivalent of a 24 millimeter lens, but it has some special qualities. It's completely waterproof. It has a super small form factor so that, that way you can actually put it into certain things. Now I'm gonna be putting it in the water for this specific shot and blowing bubbles into the lens. The only unfortunate part about this lens is that the minimum aperture that you can go to is F14. F14 does not let in a lot of light. That is a pretty closed aperture, but that is the minimum that you can go to. Hence why we use the 720B and it's wonderful, wonderful power because that will give us the lighting that we need. You'll notice that a couple of things are different. My camera card got full for my behind the scenes, but I got the shot with the probe lens. With the probe lens, I found this really cool angle where I actually was able to hold the watch really close to the probe lens, pretty much in a macro form. I could really see like the, the curve of the glass, which was cool because I moved this piece of poster board in front right here. And since I did that, there was one, one giant problem that I was running into with this specific shot. When the 720B was higher, I noticed that it was lighting up the bottom of the fish tank way too much and I could actually see it. So when I put it lower, what it was doing now is it's shooting up and it's pretty much skating across the, the bottom. So now it's a little softer light, but I don't really have a light modifier that I can use to basically cut out the light from the bottom. So this ended up working. The bottom was dark enough and it lit up the watch really well. I had a tiny bit of fill. It didn't really do too much, but it helped just a little bit. And the shot looks awesome. Uh, the bubbles worked really well. They actually came straight over the lens, which is what I was hoping for. And I was even able to pull focus, but man, that was one of the most <laughs> complex shots of the whole shoot so far, <laughs> not even gonna lie. Now that that's done, I can move into the other shots. I think I have three more shots and then that's finished. So now what I have to do is I have to swap out the band for the leather band that I have for the watch as well, and then pretty much repeat the same two beginning shots that we started with. I wanted to put these at the end just because it's a change of the actual watch itself, even though the set changed a little bit, but changing it back to how it was before, even if it's a little different should be pretty pretty easy so let's get into it well that's a wrap on the shoot let's head into the editing well first things first with the editing we gotta offload the footage so let's offload the footage Now, I took some time to make a rough cut and I immediately found a major issue. There are so many bubbles and it is so cloudy. No matter what I tried, I could not save this. Not through color, nothing. I tried everything. Now, this had me stumped. I sat with this for about a week, just thinking of different ways to fix it. And then it happened. The answers to all my worries. My biggest issue was, believe it or not, the water that I was using. Something I thought would be so insignificant made a massive difference. Tap water versus distilled water. Come to find out, tap water, as some of you may know, has lots of minerals in it. 
which makes it very, very cloudy when you actually put it all <laughs> into a fish tank. So I set off with all this new knowledge for the redo. First, the water. <laughs> Second, the set. Third, film it all again. You know, I'm very, very glad to have failed the first time to land me right back here. Second round, baby, let's go. Clicking, typing, coloring, speed ramping, sound designing, exporting, and finally, watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. It's time to reach new depths with La Terrain. The Subnautica brings a modern twist to a classic diver design, featuring an anti-reflective sapphire crystal glass and a brushed stainless steel case that can withstand up to 660 feet. And with bright C3 illumination, you'll never lose track of time in or out of the water. Plus, this automatic watch self-winds while you move, so you won't need to replace batteries ever again. And if you're not a fan of stainless steel, it comes with a stitched leather band for an easy style change. From our family to yours, La Terrain. I like that. That's much easier to script it out like that. <laughs>